Hey everyone, welcome to my video on how to upgrade the flash memory on your Nintendo Game & Watch. In my previous videos, I showed you guys how to hack your Nintendo Game & Watch so you can back it up and you can unlock it and you can play homebrew games and uh, ROMs and stuff like that. Now in this video, uh, what I'm going to show you guys is how to upgrade the flash uh, chip. Uh, so you can play more games. Now on the original flash chip you can only play I believe it's only one megabyte flash chip on the original and it's only designed to hold that one Game & Watch game that it's, it originally has on it. And I believe you can only put like probably a small ROM, probably a 127 kilobyte ROM on the original flash. And if you guys have followed my video on how to hack the Nintendo Game & Watch you've probably already noticed this. So, like I just said, this video is going to show you guys how to upgrade the flash memory to any bigger size. Uh, the one that we're going to use today is a 16 megabyte flash memory. Uh, I'll link in the description where I got this flash memory chip, but it came very fast for me. I live in Canada, but um, I'm not sure how long it will take for anywhere else, but in Canada, maybe North America, it didn't take longer than three days to get here. So that was pretty quick. And I will link uh, this 16 megabyte chip in the description below. And it was only about $3, I think. So, but then shipping and all that. But $3 for the memory chip, it's not too bad. So, I'm going to show you guys one that I've already done. This one is already done. And I have some Game Boy games on it. Pokemon, Mario, and when I click the over button I have NES games on here. So I have a whole list of NES games on here. NES games. So it's a lot more than you can fit on before when I, like in my previous videos when I only had the one NES game. So I'm going to show you guys how to accomplish a game and watch like this. So we'll put this one aside for now over here. Oops. And I'm going to grab this one, which is hacked and unlocked, but as you can see, it only has one game on it, and it's the original flash chip. So I only have um, Excite Bike on here. So playing that Excite Bike game earlier. So what I'm going to do for you guys is open this thing back up and change the flash chip to 16, sorry, 16 megabytes. Oops, I dropped it. We didn't break. There it is. So, what we're gonna need, our triangle screwdriver, obviously our hacked Game & Watch. If you don't know how to hack it, follow my previous videos, I'll obviously link those. And let's open this thing up. So you have the four screws, one in each corner, just like before. Obviously if you guys have hacked yours before, it's not going to be that difficult now for you. But I know it's easy to solder on wires and hack the thing. Well, I'm sorry, it's not easy, but it's one thing to solder on wires and hack the thing. But to put a chip on, like another new chip, uh, yeah, I wasn't, I'm not that experienced at this stuff, as you guys can probably tell. Um, <laughs> but, uh, it was kind of nerve-wracking for me. But, after I did it once, it wasn't that bad. Okay, so I'm going to go through the ways of actually doing it, because there are a few different ways you can do it. I'm not going to go through every single way, but uh, I'll give you a few different ways. So what I'm going to do first is disconnect the battery. Uh, I usually have my tweezers, but I'm just going to pull it with my fingers here very gently. You want to be careful with this battery connection. <laughs> Can't get it. Big fingers. Okay, so I pulled off the battery connection. So. 
right there where my finger is that's the flash memory chip the one megabyte chip that they have on here this is the chip that we're going to remove and there's a few different ways you can remove it I don't know all of them off the top of my head but I'll link what they are um, the one that we're going to be doing is cutting off the legs of the uh, points here where the solder is so just close to the board we're going to be cutting off very precisely where the uh, legs are onto the board where the solder meets the board I don't know if you guys can see right there we're going to be cutting all four of those pins off where the solder meets the board just to get this chip out of the way so we're going to cut those four pieces off then we're going to turn it around we're going to cut the other four pieces off so we get this flash chip off so that's the way I'm going to do it <clears throat> excuse me that's the way I'm going to do it if you don't do it that way um, I know you can get hot air I don't have that but if you get on a hot air machine or um, I'm not sure exactly what it's called but you blow hot air onto the welds here or onto the solder points and that will desolder this chip you could probably desolder it with a soldering iron too but I tried to do that but I was unsuccessful so you can definitely try different ways and like I said I'll link the different ways in my description here the video but what we're going to do is just cut off the legs of the pins here so it just exposes the board where the pins are and what you're going to need for that is just like really fine side cutters uh, for electrical work like really fine side cutters I'll show you what they are um, I'm just going to pause the video right now because I don't have them in front of me but I'm going to just put, put this thing down and show you the chip so the chip that we're replacing it with is this one here, the 16 megabyte chip. And it's pretty much identical, like it looks the same as the old chip. And this is just going to go in the same place of where the old chip went. So we'll put that chip aside for now and I'm gonna pause the video, I'll be right back grab my side cutters, I'll show you them and then we'll get cutting this chip off okay, I have my side cutters now they're just really fine fine tip sharp cutters and let's recap what I'm gonna do just cut really close to the board all eight of these pins. So I'm going to do that right now. I know it's kind of like scary doing it, but not just 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 do it <laughs> as long as you have confidence in soldering these connections just cut it off like that so I just cut those pins off as you can see try to clean it up the best you can if the if you left too much on there I may have actually cut too much on one of these pins. See, I always mess up something in my video. But we can figure that out afterwards. So I'm going to solder on this new chip. Because if that, if that pin leg that I broke off doesn't work, then we can just solder it straight to uh, where it goes onto on the board. Which is a pain in the butt, but whatever. Okay, so push out your new chip. 
here it is here put your old one aside so you don't mix it up but it looks pretty mangled up so I don't think you're going to mix that up pretty pretty bad yeah so it looks like I broke off the the uh, bottom one of these bottom uh, pegs right off the board so be very careful when you're cutting it off the uh, cutting the legs off the board. Make sure you don't cut the pin right off the board like I just did on one of them. Because um, it's going to be difficult. It's not the end of the world because I'll be able to fix this, but it's going to be difficult to fix. Well, just an extra step. So we want to line up this new chip exactly where the old chip was. So I'm going to turn on my... I should have already had my soldering iron on but I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to do all these soldering connections um, with my soldering iron here. I'll pause the video while I do that and then I'll come back while I do one side and I'll show you the other side. But basically what I'm going to do is line it up the best I can um, with the chip and the, and the pins on the board and then I'm going to solder um, one pin onto the board uh, best I can to make it even with the other pins and as long as one of them is soldered onto the board the other pins should follow pretty good so just make sure you get a really good connection on that one pin at the, the beginning so the rest of your pins follow uh, easily and then you don't have the chip all sloppily all over the board so what I'm going to do now is plug in my iron and pause the video for a minute um, do a few of these, actually just do one pin, show you guys how it's lined up, and then I'll do the rest of the pins. Okay, so I've soldered on just one pin onto the board, just so now the chip is solid onto the, well, not completely solid, but a little bit solid onto the board, so I can manipulate the pins onto the other pins onto the board and continue to solder on one by one each pin to the board. Um, just keep in mind that you want to have the chip in the same orientation that you pulled the old chip out of. Um, in my case here, one of the pins at the bottom, I broke right off the board, so I had to figure out what that pin goes to on this board, and I believe that pin goes to ground, so I just have to find a ground under my board, so I have to jump this pin with ground which is the closest ground I believe is probably right here so I'll just jump it over here with the wire so it's just a basic wire from the pin to ground here um, yeah, sometimes that happens, it happened to my other one too so it is what it is but be careful when you're doing it if you're more careful than I am then you probably won't break the pins off the board so I'm going to solder the rest of the pins on here and then show you guys and then continue on from there so I'll be right back Okay, so I soldered on the chip and I figured out where the one that I broke off the board needs to go, just to the ground. So I just put the jumper wire to the ground where it needed to go and there is my new chip soldered onto the board where I cut it off. Like I said earlier, there are different ways to get this chip off that board. I'll link some uh, descriptions of that of the different ways of how to do it in the description and different links on uh, where to go to read on how to do that stuff but uh, the way we did it today is probably the easiest way to do it so there you go that's how you upgrade your Nintendo Game & Watch uh, flash memory chip to a 16 gigabyte memory chip I'll show you guys it working. All I did afterwards was go to my computer and reflash uh, Retro Go, and I will put everything that you need to do for this for this flash chip in the description. So I reflashed it with uh, the same stuff that's on this Game and Watch. So it has the exact same flash as uh, the Game and Watch that I showed you at the beginning of the video. Just to show you, load up the game, 
There's a Pokemon game. Pokemon Blue, I think. So, there you go. It's pretty cool. You can add lots of different games. And obviously in the future, there will be lots of different games you can add when they develop them. So, there it is. Pretty cool stuff. Hope you enjoyed my video.